it's really easy to compare ourselves to other people. We feel like we should be tracking with our peers. Other people are making progress. We see their success. We're not experiencing that same success. At least it doesn't feel like it. But a lot of times we are having very similar experiences. So I'd like to talk a bit about my experience, my career, how I ended up in development, and all the failure that went into this. 1982. I was born just over 40 years ago, and I made zero dollars that year. I didn't get to even 10,000 a year until about 2007 when I was at BYU studying for a double major in economics and finance. I was an econ tutor. I taught the football team, and I finally started to make a few bucks an hour. It wasn't a lot, but I paid taxes for the first time. Anyway, from there, I managed to get a job in econ litigation consulting in Menlo Park, California, earning about 60000 a year, and I thought I was pretty cool. I was in it. What I didn't realize was that I had taken a job that was a horrific mismatch for my personality. In fact, that entire industry is a bad match for my personality. I am way too rebellious, way too interested in my own ideas and in innovating and creating crazy stuff and being creative. But that industry doesn't want that. That industry wants a paint by numbers approach. It wants accuracy and very little change. So I was a bad fit. And as such, they fired me in 2009. Big surprise there for me. But in retrospect, it shouldn't have been. Of course, the economy turned on me, turned on all of us. It wasn't just me. A lot of us got fired and it really stunk. So I really quickly tried to spin up an ill-fated drop shipping business. What a disaster. I sold about 50K in goods and lost about a thousand bucks. But I was pushing my limits. So one strong point I wanna make is that failure comes after you've pushed your limits. If you're not pushing your limits, you'll never fail. If you're afraid, if you're afraid of failure, you may never push your limits, you may never actually succeed. So that's kind of my personal approach to this. If I'm not failing, I'm not pushing my limits and I'm not going to achieve anything really surprising. Okay, so where do we go from there? 2010, I finally got a job. It was not great. It was a primary children's hospital. I got hired for my Excel experience because I'd used a lot of Excel in that econ litigation job, but I didn't want to be using Excel the rest of my life. So I started teaching myself VBA and SQL. Very quickly, I automated all of my reports and I could get my reports done in about an hour every morning. This, this is where I start to feel the pull of programming and realize, wait, computers can do things better than I can. I should teach the computer how to do my job for me. This was a huge revelation to me. I had tried programming in the past and kind of failed. I, it had never stuck. My ability to think abstractly wasn't strong enough yet. So I made a decision. I had been studying for the GMAT and I lost about 150 bucks when I decided to stop studying for the GMAT and sell my books back on eBay. The lady said they never arrived. They probably did, but I lost about 150 bucks on that ill-fated GMAT attempt. But I learned something. I'll never forget sitting there at the table, staring at my GMAT books, calculating how much debt I was about to go into. I was doing math in my head, like I was trying to learn with, for the GMAT. And that math in my head indicated that I was going to be in about a quarter million dollars of debt in about two years, if everything went well. So my best case scenario was a quarter million in debt and however many years of hard labor would be required after that to dig out, create a career in my 30s at this point. I was like 27. And I realized that just wasn't for me. But this programming thing I was toying around with in 2010 at the hospital, that was for me. So I got a job doing SQL ETL at a company called Family Search. And I eventually realized that I could distribute my SQL scripts I was writing via PHP and jQuery. I could give them to my team. So I wrote the world's worst 
PHP file. I mean, maybe that's exaggerating. I wrote an enormous PHP file. It had a bunch of JavaScript attached to it, and this sucker ran my whole job for me. It was the PHP file to end all PHP files. And I served it to my coworkers. They started to use it as well, and we all started to get really productive. So as output went through the roof, I realized this is my future. I can make teams really productive, even with garbage PHP. So I took a job that's not on this chart at a marketing firm. This marketing firm will never be named. It was a horror show. They were fraudulent. They fired me for telling a coworker how much I was being paid when I realized how little he was being paid. I felt so bad for him, I, I told him. Of course, he goes straight to management, tells them, and tries to negotiate based off of what I told him. Uh, what? Anyway, that got me fired, which turns out is illegal. You can't do that. You can't fire people for that kind of stuff. So they did their best to gin up some reasons. Bad employers are gonna do bad employer stuff. They were garbage, absolute trash. But they got me into the industry and they got me sitting next to some engineers who were half decent and had some, had some desire to really get good. So sitting next to those engineers started to teach me and started to inspire me. So I got a job pretty quickly because now I had some experience at a company called At Task. Now, I pushed back my start date because my wife had been working on this calligraphy teaching business. And so I pushed my start date back one month so I could spend some time developing a website for my wife so she, we could start selling her teaching business online. She's a really good calligrapher. She teaches phenomenally. So I took a risk and I started working full time while also working really hard on this calligraphy project. And my goodness, I started to learn really, really fast. And as soon as my wife's business started to pick up, I realized, shoot, I've got a future here. So I started to put a little more effort into that. And I continued to work really hard at that task. We used something called Moo Tools, which turns out total dead end technologically. No one uses Moo Tools anymore. What a waste of time and energy. But I learned a lot. So I, oh, I also sat next to some really good engineers, and that is critical. Learning as an engineer is a lot about osmosis. You learn from the people around you, from the people you work with, and you learn from really hard problems that you have to tackle. So if you don't have hard problems, if you don't have good people sitting next to you, you can be in for a world of hurt. All right, where do we go from here? Well, the next bit of my career has been total pivot. Uh, I spent about four years working on calligraphy. I was also a Firebase GDE or Google developer expert at the time. I went all in on that. My wife's business did really well. We were making a quarter million a year in profit at the height, but that only lasted for a little bit. And then it started to tail off in 2016, 2017. So the whole time I was scrambling, trying to spin up businesses, trying to consult. Um, and some of it kind of got a little bit of traction, but never enough, never enough to support the family. I exhausted all my options, but I was smart enough and I quit. Uh, it was really important to quit all those other side hustles and focus on calligraphy. But then when calligraphy started to die, I had to quit that as well. So let's talk a bit about quitting. Quitting is really important. You have to quit. If you don't quit, you may never get to the next step in your career or your life or whatever. But the hard part is when do you quit? So the quit for me from at task was really, really hard. I had a job, I was getting paid. I was making about 60K a year at at task and about 60K a year with my wife's business. And I had to have my income and quit. When do you quit? You quit when you think that you can grow the business. When you think it makes sense to go all in on something, but it's terrifying. And don't quit your job too soon. If you quit your job prematurely, you actually put yourself in a very bad position. So I took, I kept that job as long as I could. I kept it a full 14 months while my wife's business grew. And there came a day when I just looked at myself and realized I can make the business grow faster. I should do that. My income at this job is going to grow at like maybe five, 10% a year, but I can start to really commit to this business. And so I did that and I started to build the business. Bootstrapping is awesome when it works. It is pure and utter misery when it doesn't. So for a bit there, it was working. And I, we doubled the business a couple of times. That was fantastic. But then I had to quit that business as well. And it was like cutting off an arm. It just, it, 
my hopes and dreams were all crushed. But in 2017, just before I was going to go bankrupt, a company called Pluralsight took me in and I learned React and I started to rebuild my career within companies again. I, I still miss bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is the best when it works, but I needed stability. And it, that began to look a lot like having a job. At the same time, I was doing double duty, rewriting calligraphy furiously so it would be stable. I was able to rewrite calligraphy and the calligraphy you see today at calligraphy.org is the calligraphy that I rewrote in 2017. Still making money, not a lot, but it's still making money. It's still stable. Code can just sit sometimes, it's amazing. I was also working on some Firebase content. Turns out that was a dead end. Firebase is awesome. I love Firebase. I really, really do, and I will use it forever. But unfortunately, Firebase did not get the enterprise adoption that I needed to make it a cornerstone of my career going forward. So I've had to kind of put that on ice. I'll still use Firebase on every personal project, every chance I get, but I can't commit myself to Firebase anymore. It's not a career going forward for me. If I'd pick something else to really focus on like Angular or React, maybe I could have created content in that space and generated a business off of that. But Firebase, even though I was into the ground floor, it didn't get big enough. Okay, so 2019, Pluralsight sold, or I guess went IPO. And after that IPO, I got a little, a little bonus, it was great. And that was enough to pay down some of my second mortgage that I'd taken on amidst all of this mess. And I took a job at Workfront or at Task Junior, as I like to call it. It was originally at Task. They renamed to Workfront. And then while I was there, after about two years, we sold to Adobe. So now it's Adobe Workfront. And I got two exits in a row. Pluralsight exited, IPO'd, Workfront sold. Super duper lucky. I was able to make a nice big dent in my mortgage at that point. Um, yeah, debt is miserable. I really, really dislike debt. And so I fought debt at that point, got out of debt, and felt like I could take a risk. At that point, I was ready to join a VC-backed startup and try to do this thing for real. Like I bootstrapped, I love bootstrapping, I'd worked at these smaller companies, now it's time to work at a VC-backed startup. And I found some people I really liked working with. I, in 2021, I started working at boompop.com. It was a React stack that eventually became Node and AWS. And I worked with fantastic people there, really enjoyed it. I stayed just over two years, but toward the end, I started to lose my fire. And when you lose your fire for a project, when you lose that, that deep abiding interest in succeeding and succeeding with this group of people and something starts to gnaw at you and you don't really feel comfortable anymore. You know, I spent months trying to fight that and I almost won. But I realized at one point I just had to quit. It, it, the time had come. And so I found another job and I have spent the last little bit at a company called Highlight. Highlight.io is the website and I'm really excited. I'm getting back into content again. I'm generating more content, more client focused work for Highlight. So you'll hopefully be seeing me on the Highlight channel and I'll be hopefully posting more on this channel as well. My experience has been a lot of failure mixed with some success. And I haven't had a lot of control over where that success came. The success sort of happens when it happens. So I've worked a lot and I would recommend this to anyone. Work a lot, try a lot of things. When you're successful, awesome. When you're not, evaluate when the moment is to quit, quit, move on and just never give up, never surrender. Never give up. Never give up. I'll never surrender. Never surrender. Never give up. Never surrender. Never give up. Never surrender. Never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> Never give up. Never surrender. Oh, shut up.